Dr. Uh, John Hart, because we basically just asked you to call the three key races or three of the big races, Honolulu mayor, Big Island mayor, Honolulu prosecutor. You were three for three, my friend. Well, not sure if we have Dr. Hart there, but uh, we'll get to him in a, in a little bit. But those were some of the uh, races. There he is. I don't know if you heard me, but uh, now that we do have the numbers, you were uh, three for three on your selections. Uh, so your thoughts, yeah, now that we I have some concrete got, numbers. Well, yeah, I think we also got the uh, charter amendments correct, too. Yeah, I think from the beginning, uh, we were kind of no, no, or yes, yes, no, no, yeah. when we uh, talked about it previously, so correct. Yeah, now, um, I think, obviously, this printout is going to be pretty definitive. There's one race I will point out, uh, council member for uh, Hawaii, uh, for the, uh, Central Oahu, uh, Augie Till, T and Willis Barrow. Uh, that's fairly close. That's uh, 400 votes. So... That's one that possibly could change, but the rest of these I'm looking at, all the major races and, and the variances are too big. Yeah, that's an interesting call in that race because Will Sparrow, somebody who's basically been uh, under the political microscope for many years, Augie T, a local uh, comedian, funny man who has never f had a foray into politics, running his first race. One thing about Augie T, uh, I I've been to one of his shows. I actually was uh, part of one as we did a broadcast. You know, he's a very funny guy and he gets into the culture very straight, never swears. That was always one of his things. I'm never going to use any derogatory words. And, uh, you know, he was very serious. As a funny man, can you take him serious? He got very into it when he got into this race. And uh, I, I think he proved to a lot of people that he was very serious about uh, getting into this arena. And he is a businessman, and he was endorsed by Shopo and the Lodging and uh, Tourism Association. Right. So that is true indeed. So now that we know that Rick uh, Blanchardi... Uh, seemingly will be the next mayor of Honolulu. Your words of wisdom and advice for him uh, is, again, he takes the reins of the city, uh, not for a while. He's got a little month and a half or so of a transition, but he's going to be inheriting uh, a lot of challenges. What is the first step that you take as a political newcomer when it comes to building your team? And how important is it to, to keep some political insiders around you who have kind of been there, done that, and understand the inner workings of the political machine? Well, I think I, I hope and I believe that he's already started to put together a team. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his big promises was to put together a good team to get him the data and help make decisions. Uh, I think you will see some political insiders. Uh, I'm not saying that Colleen Hanabusa will have an official role, but as third place person, she threw her support behind him early and I think people like that will have his ear. So just because he doesn't have any direct experience doesn't mean he won't be talking with people who have. Got you. Uh, Keith Amimi, I mean, he still is an executive uh, with First Insurance, a big company. And, uh, you know, I, I know he will have a very successful future, whether he continues to want to go down the road of politics in the future. That remains to be seen. Let's uh, move on over to the Big Island where uh, Mitch Roth, Again, the prosecutor over there uh, will be the mayor, uh, succeeding Harry Kim, uh, Ikaiko Marzo, or Ikaika Marzo, who uh, became very well known and I'm sure was uh, very popular uh, among a lot of people, obviously was. But uh, Mitch Roth uh, brings a lot of experience to the table. Well, yeah, and I think, again, just like Keith, you know, whether or not his opponent, you know, wants to continue to try for elective office. I don't know. There are obviously many ways to serve the public good besides being an elected official. He's done some of that already as a community activist. Uh, I'm not surprised, obviously, you heard my opinion before about, about who would win this one. Uh, I think for the Big Island, you know, they want some stability like Kerry provided. It was just, you know, uh, time for Harry to go. He he had done a great job, but I think they were ready to move on. And speaking of stability, that's going to be the job of Steve Alm here on the Island of Oahu, looking at the Honolulu yeah. City Prosecutor's Office, which has been in shambles. And uh, he's got a big job in front of him, too. And uh, cleaning house, what's left, may be part of his first move. 
Well, I, I think given his experience, he just won't clean house. He has enough knowledge and enough experience to go into that office and decide who to keep and who not to keep. There are a lot of good people in that office. The rank and file were doing a good job. It was a leadership problem. I think he will know who to keep, who to get rid of. I think we'll see some interesting initiatives from him, uh, similar to the HOPE program. And I think he will do a good and much needed job in restoring public confidence. And hats off to Megan Cowell with 44% of the votes, nearly 150,000 uh, people punched her name. Uh, that's uh, nothing to sneeze at, and it'll be interesting to see what her future is and what role she may play in the office. Yeah. The, the final surveys were showing her closing the gap. Mm -hmm. It was just such a large gap from the primary. And I would think she would be encouraged to run again, and I wouldn't be surprised to see her do that. On the other hand, if Steve could get her to be part of the prosecutor's office, I think she'd be an excellent addition. That was kind of my point with that. Right on, Doctor. We thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if uh, you're going to stand by, but I want to get back to Joe. I know we've given him a little chance to kind of decipher some of the numbers, and hopefully we have a, some of the candidates standing by now that we have some results. Thank you for all your insight. Appreciate it, sir. Joe, we're going to send it back to you. All right, yeah, just looking down a, a couple of the other races in, in that state representative, District 40, uh, always interesting to see how one of our few Republicans in the state that holds office, how they do each election cycle. Bob McDermott in that uh, 40th representative district is leading Rose Martinez uh, and will win tonight with 54% of the vote to Martinez, 42%. That's 4,644 votes for McDermott, 3,609 for Martinez. And in the state representative 50th district, that's uh, Cynthia Thielen, the Republican who was the longtime representative in that district and served with great distinction, uh, has stepped down and is retiring. So in this race, we've got the Democrat, Pat uh, Branco, with uh, 7,402 votes, and the Republican, Kanani Souza, 4,546. So Souza will uh, lose that race. Those are a couple that jumped out at us uh, in addition to the ones we had earlier. We'll take a short break here and be back with our election coverage, belated election coverage, in just a moment. Closed captioning for the KHON2 News is brought to you by the Queen's Health Systems, Hawaii's health care leader. I protect myself, so I protect you. I will wash my hands, keep my distance. Always wear my mask. We stand together in our hearts. So aloha lives until we meet again. We are Hawaii. We can beat COVID-19. I finally found the furniture I want. It's perfect, let's get it. Of course they don't ship to Hawaii. Hey, I found a place. Get your hard to ship items to Hawaii affordably and quickly. We got you covered when you shop online and you see those options that say accept Alaska and Hawaii. After all, we're part of the US too. Welcome to Ship to Hawaii. How can I help you? Ship to Hawaii. You find, we ship easy. ShipToHawaii.com. Ali, we just gave two thumbs up to Elantra and Kona. I know, Cindy, but look at the all new redesigned 2020 Sonata. We gotta give it. Two thumbs up. Come see the new redesigned 2020 Sonata at Tony Hyundai in beautiful YPO. When we were talking about that city councilman race uh, in uh, uh, in the Honolulu district there between Augie T and uh, Will Lespero, and we were mentioning that Augie T's got the lead, but it is only 70 votes, so potentially 
that's one that could turn around in, in the second printout. And Willis Barrow, of course, the longtime state senator, uh, served for some 19 years. So we'll, that one we may just have to wait to see if Augie T holds on to the lead there. All right, let's get back to uh, Gina Mangieri uh, at the convention center. Gina? All right, we've had a little time to look at some of the numbers of what really ended up coming out in that revised first printout. We had been told for days it would only include the mail and drop box up until um, the mail and drop box up until the uh, Monday, but they appear to have put in voter service center numbers as well. Let me run you through some of that and well, so we get a first preview of turnout and what's still to come. So we know that this first, the first uh, results here, mail included uh, from the mail and drop box in the first results as well as the voter service center's numbers that they threw in. 355,000 on Honolulu and mail, 9,000 from the voter service center. Big Island, 80,000 plus 4,000 in person. Maui, 61,000 mail and drop plus 4,000 in person. Kauai, 29,000 drop plus 2,000 in person. That's what gets us to this collective 546,000 votes counted in the first pass. That is real consistent with what we had been predicting all along. A 66% turnout reflected within that first printout. Here's what I found interesting though, from the numbers we knew from the clerks as of Monday, for whatever reason, they left uncounted so far, about 3,000 votes up through Monday in Honolulu, about 15,000 votes up through Monday on the Big Island and 218 on Maui. So uh, that's about 20,000 votes received up till Monday that for one reason or another didn't jump into this first tally. Now it could be anything, going through signature verification, um, uh, getting the cards transmitted uh, over here from uh, to Honolulu from the neighbor islands if it was the voter service center number. So we already know there's quite a substantial number, 20,000, uh, a big number but a small percent that is uh, was already received as of Monday and that still gets us to about 66%. That number that is being counted so far, for the Big Island especially, we know that their turnout is a lot higher than what's been counted so far. And so they had been into the 70% of turnout according to numbers directly from the clerk earlier today. They've only counted 66% of the Big Island's um, uh, votes so far. And so we'll see what comes out when they add in the uh, remainder that had been collected through Monday, plus what could be collected up until uh, tonight. And that's where we got into a little bit of that guessing game. How much could still possibly come based on how busy it was at the polls? Here's where we made that educated guess um, that it, a prob anywhere between, um, well, at the time when we didn't think the voter service center numbers would come in, we thought that that could be added in. I'm gonna take that out. That means maybe about 70,000 or so could pop in to the uh, tally uh, from the, today, what came in on that. And, and we can go ahead and also change this number, the 529 in the first results to match what we really got, which was 546. Let's see what happens. So here we are again, we're in the high 80s, maybe 90% um, of results, very, very similar. It's almost an echo of primaries. Joe, back to you. All right, thanks, Gina. Let's, uh, we've heard from uh, Rick Blangiardi earlier this evening, well, and, and Keith Amamiya as well. Let's see what Mr. Amamiya has to say now after this first printout. So many people got involved in the democratic process. It's always great when we have as many people voting as we've had in this election. I hope they continue to vote, to continue to stay involved in the political process, and continue to help our communities across the state. I'd also like to thank my many, many campaign volunteers. Many of them joined me on this journey 14 months ago when I began this campaign. I can't thank them enough for their hard work, support, yes. and dedication. Many of them were like me, rarely involved in campaigns before, but they stepped up to the fore because they were interested in creating a better Oahu a better future for all of us. Yeah, so in particular, I'd like to thank my wife, Bonnie, and my son, Chris, for joining me in this journey. It's very difficult to be a spouse of a candidate and a son of a candidate, but they both stepped up 
and help me day in and day out, whether it was sign waving or going no, out in the communities yeah. whenever we could. Uh, and many, many other tasks uh, that, in, that are important in a campaign. So thank you to Bonnie and Chris for all that they've done for me. It's brought us closer together as a family, and I'm so proud that they represented both my campaign and our family so well. I ran for mayor because we need a change. We need a new perspective. We need new voices. We new, need new people in government. The people of Oahu agreed. That's why there were two first-time candidates that made it to the general election. But let's not sugarcoat this. Our island is in crisis. We have many challenges facing us, even before the COVID-19 pandemic. We have a lack of affordable housing, a high cost of living, rampant homelessness across our island, and we need to address climate change. Of course, first and foremost, we need to address the COVID-19 crisis that's facing us we need to rebuild tourism and the many other industries that have suffered because of COVID-19. So let me be clear. We all need to get behind and stand with Rick Blanjardi as our next mayor. We need to unify and work together. This is a challenge that no one person can do him or herself. So I ask my supporters who joined me on this journey and supported me in this election to join me in supporting Rick and his team as he leads our city through this pandemic crisis. Mahalo to everyone for their support and their care and concern for the island that we love, the island of Oahu. Let's all work together, stay together, and move forward together. Because I truly believe that if we do all of that, we can create a better and stronger Oahu for not only us, but for the many generations to come. Aloha and mahalo.